All right, now, finally, we have symbolic dynamics set up for the horseshoe. We know how to assign itineraries to points by infinite sequences of zeros and ones. Let's get to work and prove some results about the dynamics of the horseshoe map. The big idea is that with what we've defined with respect to itineraries, we can take that invariant set lambda for the horseshoe map, think about how that map acts on the invariant set, and we can build a correspondence to itineraries. We can take the set of bi-infinite sequences in two digits, zero and one. Look at the shift map on that, the map that just moves the decimal point one place over to the right and shifts all the digits to the left, forgetting nothing because this is an invertible system. Now, what we have in this is a topological conjugacy that the action of the shift map on bi-infinite sequences is really the same as the action of the horseshoe map on the invariant set. Now, wait just a minute. We haven't actually proven that this is a topological conjugacy, but we're going to do that proof a little bit later. For now, let's focus on what we can do with this, what we can do with symbolic dynamics as far as proving things about the horseshoe map. Let's start off with something easy, namely the claim that the horseshoe map has exactly two equilibria. How do you prove that? Well, how many ways are there to write down a bi-infinite symbol sequence in two digits that is invariant under the shift map? I can have a string that is all zeros, or I can have a string that is all ones, and that's it. The string of all zeros, that equilibrium, is the one that we already know about in the lower left-hand corner. It starts in the strip H0, remains in the strip H0 for all time, future and past. But likewise, the equilibrium that corresponds to one repeated by infinitely starts and remains in the upper strip H1. And that's it as far as equilibria go. What about periodic orbits? The horseshoe map has periodic orbits of all periods and finitely many of each. And the proof is almost too easy. Just write down periodic by infinite symbol sequences. Can I do so with period 17? Oh yes, absolutely. For example, if we look at period five, how many periodic orbits are there? I claim that there are six of them, and what I can do is I can write out words of length five, and we just repeat them by infinitely. Stick a decimal point wherever you want. Doesn't matter. That will change the initial point on the periodic orbit, but it won't change the orbit itself. Now, it's worth spending a little bit of time here thinking about why it is we have exactly six orbits of period five and not more. Is there a formula for how to compute how many periodic orbits of period, I don't know, 39 there might be? That's not so obvious. But let's keep going. Does the horseshoe have a dense orbit? Yes. Now, this requires considering what it means for two points on orbits to be close. Two sequences or itineraries corresponding to points are close if they agree on a large block, a symmetric block about the decimal point. So they have to agree now, and they have to agree sort of uh, close in the future and close in the past. And the longer that block is, the closer these two points are. So what we're really claiming is that there exists some orbit in the horseshoe map that can approximate any point you want on as large a block as you want. And of course, the way we're going to do that is the same way that we did it for non-invertible systems. We're going to write down a symbol sequence that has within it all possible finite strings of zeros and ones. And you can do so by just putting in a bunch of garbage and then a decimal point and then zero one 
0001 and then 000 all strings of length 3, of length 4, of length 5, etc. There's a lot of space to pack things in. Now, this particular itinerary corresponds to an orbit that's dense in forward time. Make it symmetric. Just reflect about the decimal point, and you've got something that is dense in backwards time as well. There's so much that you can do here. There is so much space in a bi-infinite sequence. Now, of course, given that, it's clear how to show that the horseshoe map has a dense periodic orbit set. How do we prove that? Pick any point in the invariant set lambda. Consider its itinerary, its sequence of zeros and ones. And now, just choose some large block about the decimal point. Let's say I'm going to take a block of length 8. And then, whatever those digits are, repeat them periodically, over and over and over. That's a periodic orbit of period 8 that is kind of close to this point x. You want to get closer? Take a longer block. Take a block of length 100, or 1,000, or a billion, and just repeat it periodically. That is a very high period periodic orbit that is as close as you want to your initial point. So almost everything is a periodic orbit, right? Wrong. The horseshoe map exhibits sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Why? Pick any two nearby initial conditions. Let's say you've got a point x and its itinerary with digits a sub n, and then you've got another point y with its itinerary with digits b sub n. And let's say that these are really, really close. That is, the a sub n and the b sub n digits agree for a large number of values of n, for all n less than some constant in absolute value. So if they agree on a large block about the decimal point, they're very, very close together. So what does the future look like? Well, if you move forward one time step, these two points are still very close, but not necessarily as close as they were before. If you keep going more time steps, then we might be losing some digits of agreement as data from the future comes into this initial block of agreement. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Pretty soon, all of this known agreement that you had is so far in the past, and what has come in the future is so unknown that there's no correlation between where these points are. They're just bouncing around at random. Now, all of this together makes a really, really easy proof of chaos, that the horseshoe is, in fact, a chaotic dynamical system. And there's so much more that we could prove with symbolic dynamics as well. All of it, assuming that we have that nice topological conjugacy. We still have some details to discuss about that.